All right, so here we have a pattern from Maya, and we've got this first layer of the pattern with these four blue pixels, then we add the orange pixels on top of that, and finally the green after that. Now, a couple of things to think about here is that I'm not entirely sure how this pattern is growing because I'm not really sure what comes next. Uh, I'm wondering, is it the same shape here of orange pixels, but maybe in this spot? Oops, right here. Like, kind of like this, I would, <laughs> boy, like this, right? It would be, I'm thinking, does this shape repeat on all corners? Like, and where does it go? Here, does it go, I would guess it would go here. Oops, one down, right? Maybe here. Um, the point is, in order to understand this pattern better, I, I really would like to see at least two more steps added onto this. So these plus two more to really understand this pattern. The next thing to think about is, is this really step one or should it be something else? Now I think that it should be step zero. So I'm going to write zeros in here. This would help. And these would be step one. And then finally, in the outer perimeter here, this is all step two. I'm just going to be lazy and destroy an arrow. This is all step two. And this is all step two. I think this will help us a little bit. All right, so th the next thing to think about is um, what what to analyze in this pattern. And I, I think that if we look at our step numbers and we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's see the first five steps. If we look at our blue pixels versus let's just say our height and our width. I don't want to look at the totals because, um, not yet at least, maybe later, but here I notice that I'm adding different amounts each time. So it's going to constantly waver back and forth about how many pixels I'm adding. In other words, here I add 3, 6, 9, 12 pixels. Then I add 3, 6, 9, 12 times 2 pixels, or 24 pixels. And then I, I, would, I think I'm going to go back to adding another 12 pixels next. It's going to kind of waver. I think we leave that out of the, the, the analysis for now. Uh, so how many blue pixels are there? Well, there's four in the beginning, and there doesn't seem to ever be four more. So there's always going to be four blue pixels. Now, when you have an equation like this, what I would like to see is a, a graph just for this equation, uh, and this relationship, excuse me. So you can write blue as a function of time always equals four. Let's show a couple of example, exa examples. Blue of one equals 4. Then show more than that. Blue of 2, blue of 3, blue of 4, blue of 100. That would equal 4, four excuse me. And then explain in your own words why this makes sense to you. In the graph, what we should see, this is a really rough graph by me, we have step number and blue pixels. So I want to see a nice separate graph for this. I want you to show me these points, excuse me, the points you analyze on the graph. So for example, here, one, two, three, four. All right, I'm going to have a line essentially at four. Well, blue of one is four. That's a, that means it's step one. We're at four. So you can show the point one, four. And then maybe uh, over here, way down the line, dot, 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 right? Not the scale. This is step 100. You could show me it's still, right? Blue of 100 at four is the point 100, comma, four. Show me some other points in there as well. Now, the height and width, as interesting as this pattern is, is they do grow at nice constant rates. The height is always increasing up to and down to, so it's up four, right? And then up to, down to, up four again. And the height starts at three, right? And it goes up by four. So it goes seven, 11, 15, 19, 23. And the width uh, starts at three and it goes two in each direction as well. So that's four more each time. So the height and width equations and relationships are actually the same. So the next thing I'd like to see from you is a graph just for these two. And um, so let's think about the equations for these two. The height as a function of time or step number or whatever equals the width as a function of step number. And that equals our starting point, which is three. This is the y-intercept. Make sure you show that on your graph. Plus four for every second, or whatever unit you're using. This is the slope. On the graph, I'd like to see that slope. I want to see it going up four over one. 
and then show a couple of examples. How do you? What's the height at one? What's the height at a hundred? Plug this into your equation. So I would do something like this: three plus you're plugging in one for t, four times one or four, which is seven, and that's correct. For a hundred, it'd be three plus four times a hundred, and that's going to be four hundred and three. So on your graph, I should see we have step or time, whatever you're using, versus which is the height and width of your pixels. I'll put what pixel height and width. I should see it starting at one, two, three, as the equation says, and then going up four for every second. And then explain a couple of key points. For example, the point one, seven. What does this point mean about the pixel pattern? It means that the first step, there are seven, uh, the height and width is seven. So show a couple of points and explain that. Also show that rise and run being four over one. Show that. Now, we also, I would like to see a step function as well. So a step function is a function that more ap accurately represents what's happening because this pattern doesn't change in between steps and the line does show a constant change, so it's inaccurate. So how can we do that? Well, it turns out that the height and the width, because they're the same, right? all we need to do is either use what's called a ceiling function. Ceiling. This means you take your variable and round up. Or a floor function, which means you take your variable, figure out what's there, and round down. Right? This is floor. And sometimes, this doesn't always work, but sometimes you can just plug these brackets into your linear equation. Um, and then it will work. In other words, you plug them here, and you plug them around the variable, and see which one actually gives you the correct result. Now, my hint to you, I'm not going to do it here. I want you to figure it out on your own. Put the brackets around t. Try ceiling, try floor, and then round to the nearest whole number, whatever that quotient, whatever that is, excuse me, multiply by 4, and then add 3. Don't just try whole numbers, because these whole number steps won't give you different results. You want to try half steps as well. So show whatever function you think it is, figure it out by plugging in 0, then show a half. Then show what happens when you plug in 1. Then show what happens when you plug in 1 and 1 half. And then show me what happens with 2, and so on and so forth. Go, go far with this until you feel like you really have got it. Because these, these steps right here are the keys, the fraction pieces. When you plug in 1 half, whichever of these two is correct, plugging in 1 half, should give you, think about this, it's in between 0 and 1. It should definitely give you a height of 3, right? Whichever one of these is correct will give you a height of 3 because the height doesn't change until 7 until you reach the first full second or first full step. So we should see that here at 1, not at a half. Any fraction between 0 and 1 should still give you a height of 3. It hasn't changed yet. Now the height of 1 and a half, that's in between 1 and 2. There should be no change. It should still be equal to a height of 7. It doesn't become a height of 11 until you reach step 2. Nothing happens in between that. So try these out and establish it. Now, what I should see is a graph. And the graph, I can start for you. Right? The equation, you don't need the equation to make the graph, not necessarily at least. Let me just show you what the graph would look like so you can get started on that as well. Oops. Oh boy, I seem to have deleted everything and can't get it back. Oh man. Okay, so that's all right. I'll just recreate it. So we're looking at step number versus height and width. So let's just count that. <coughs> Excuse me. It goes zero, which is step zero, and the height was three. Then at step one, we added, that's right, two more to the top, two more to the bottom, so we added four all together. And then step two, we did that again, four up. Two up and two down, which is four altogether. Sorry about this. So step one is going to be seven. Step two is going to be 11. Now, what should the step function look like? Well, you have a y-axis, which is the height and the width, and the x-axis, which is the step number. So that's the same as before. So this is the pixel height and width. But if we go step zero, step one, step two, step three, what I should see is that the height stays at 3 
right, from step zero to step one. And then precisely when we get to step one, right, we don't include three at one, so we put an open circle there. We include four, five, six, seven. Seven, because it's really at seven at step one. And then it stays at seven as you get infinitely close to step two, at which point, whoop, open circle, it goes up to eight, nine, 10, 11. A uh, height of 11. And then it stays until you reach the third second. Now, what I'd like to see from you is that you continue this until the fourth, fifth, and maybe even sixth step, and then explain what these points mean. Why is this open circle? Why does it make sense you don't include, for example, at step two? Why don't you include this point, but instead this point up here? Also, explain why don't why do we bother putting these open circles? For example, why not just write something like this? Right, and then start here. And you could do that. Think about what this is saying. What does it mean? Why are, the line gets closer and closer and closer and closer, really, 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 really close to three, but not exactly three. So think about why that makes sense in the context of this pattern. I'd like to see your work. Thanks.